man rob God. Rob God, that's right. And uh, of course, a man will rob God. A man been robbing God since man been here. Right. All right. You're cursed with a curse for you have robbed me, uh -huh. even this whole nation. Yeah. Bringing all the tithes into the storehouse. And, and the storehouse is not the preacher's pocket. That's right. And the storehouse is not the preacher's house. That's right. You see, when we pay tithes and offerings, that's what keeps the broadcast going. That's how churches got built. That's how we clothe naked folk, and that's how we feed hungry. Double M. WDO. Double M WDO is what I call making money with devil obligations. obligations. David, hey guys, before we continue, I found that 93% of you who watch these videos are not subscribed. Click that subscribe button to support truth and click the like button to keep these videos populated within the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for your support and truth. Let's get right to it. Now, not only are you, you sinning for pleasure and using your body to sin against the Lord, but now if you try to pull back and try to stop those things that you were doing to sin against the Lord, now demons are involved where they, they have power. Four and a half years ago, when I first introduced the revelation of satanic employment, I articulated it on an entry level perspective for the average sinner whom Satan tries to devour through the overwhelming dictates that life consumes the multitudes with. Matthew, the 13th chapter, verse 22, depicts he who received the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. We need money to sustain in this world. But 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 9 through 10 infers that those who desire to be rich fall into great temptation. And the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. So four years ago, I taught satanic employment primarily from the perspective of that married man who works 50 to 60 hours per week. He has very little time for God. And the kingdom of hell sets a stumbling block in the form of a woman who's presented to him on his job. He knows that, I mean, he, speaking in the devil, he knows that man must return to work and earn a living to provide. So let's seduce him with lust until he commits adultery. That is what I call covert satanic employment. The job itself is not satanic but the circumstances are then there is overt satanic employment you know a porn star has the same necessity to feed her children but the job itself is satanic employment so if that man or woman desires to receive salvation in christ jesus he or she must terminate their employment and follow him this is what Christ meant in Luke chapter 17, verse 33, when he said, whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life will preserve it. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24 says, you cannot serve God and mammon. So Satan or a messenger of Satan is sent to inflict the penalty for whosoever picks up their cross and follow Yah. Apostle Paul spoke of this thorn in his flesh in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. And this is what leads us to Pastor Geno Jennings. There is no doubt in my mind that Geno Jennings is under overt satanic employment, and he's making money with devil obligations. Double M W B O as I coined it. Not only does he fraudulently collect a tithe and falsely claims to be an apostle, but he has omitted many scriptures in his message and is not coded with the humility and perseverance of a true apostle. Uh, with tithing and offering, we have many hundreds and hundreds of poor brothers and sisters all around the world, uh, in foreign countries, in India, in Africa. We buy land so they can grow food, mm -hmm. so they can have something to eat. All of that fall in obeying God. How do we get that land? Through tithing and, off and offering. And offering. 
Now, the tithe was an Old Testament commandment on behalf of the Levitical priesthood who had no inheritance among the children of Israel. And the children of Israel were to receive or inherit the land promised to them by God, which he promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, their, their descendants. Technically, the Israelites were subject to keep those laws until the new covenant of Christ. But this pulpit hypocrite pimp claims to collect the tithe in the name of giving to the poor. Yes. Greater work than these shall he do. Because I yes, I did more work than the Son of God. We had baptized thousands. Jesus only baptized more disciples than John. Jesus had a short ministry. I've been preaching longer than Jesus. I know they're going to upset somebody. Now, does that sound like a man who sincerely cares about giving to the poor? Again, Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, preemptively took precaution, saying, Lest I be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations. Number one, he never wanted to do or say anything that would cause men to exalt him above God, like Pastor Geno just did. And number two, real apostles had revelations from God and not just church buildings. I don't care! I've been preaching longer than Jesus. Bring ye all the tithes. I had one man say, you're the first preacher I ever met that do right by God's money. Mm. I'm scared of God. Amen. I'm scared to death of God. Yeah. And you wouldn't get me to go to hell over a half a penny. You're on your way to hell for far more than just stealing the church's money. Will a man rob God? Rob God, that's right. And uh, of course, a man will rob God. A man been robbing God since man been here. Okay. So let's revisit overt satanic employment in regards to Ego Jennings, who refers to himself as an apostle, to whom much is given, much is required, even if he fraudulently claims to be an apostle and collects the tithe and the praises of men, if he were to ever sincerely convert and repent, he would have to return all the money he stole. And he would have to publicly repent and come back as a babe, renouncing the nine or ten false doctrines that he has taught for so many years. And Satan would use those synagogues to come snatch them church buildings because he gave it to them. God permitted Satan to touch Job and his possessions, and Job was a righteous man. So how much more is Geno Jennings, an unrighteous man? In Luke chapter 19, Zacchaeus, the chief tax collector, he restored fourfold everything he falsely took from anyone through false accusation, and he gave away half of his possessions. In chapter 19, verse 5 of Luke, notice how Christ told Zacchaeus. He just announced himself. He said, I'm coming to your house today. <laughs> so Zacchaeus was a satanic employee whom Christ gave the same instructions for his salvation as he did the rich young ruler. You see that? This is the penalty for double MWDO, making money with devil obligations, because Zacchaeus at one point in his life was making money with devil obligations. If you are teaching a false doctrine and you're collecting a tithe from the church, although the tithe itself is not biblical, okay, you are making money with devil obligations. If you are exalting yourself in the midst of the people above God, then you are making money with devil obligations. If you are causing families to break up and marriages to, to be torn apart by preaching a false doctrine of divorce and remarriage, and not uh, implementing the grace of God into your word uh, to the people, then you are making money with devil obligations because Satan is using you to bring people into bondage. Okay, but nevertheless, in the Old Testament, there were 10 commandments. The New Testament, there are the 17 works of the flesh. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 10 
warns that the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, which pretty much represents the 17 works of the flesh, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, hearsays, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the apostle said the like, of which he said, I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, furthermore, the mantle of an apostle requires an insurmountable weight of the gospel. Okay, an apostle is one who is hollowed out for God. Okay, he's not just a pastor. The apostle, most of his time is spent in the presence of God. And God trusts him with his word. And not only that, he trusts him with a grace of power that's upon the apostle's life. It's more than likely that an apostle is not a married man. Okay, but I don't have time to get into that. But nevertheless, this is why many people believe there were only 12 apostles and Paul was the 12th apostle. Okay, now this is debatable. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 11, Paul said, We apostles hunger and thirst. We are poorly clothed and beaten to death, and we are homeless. Okay, verse 9. God has displayed us last as men condemned to death. Okay, so to be an apostle, you must be so lowly among men. You must be poorly clothed and homeless, and you must be condemned to death. Geno Jennings is none of those things. Okay, he's just a poor pit pimp a hot-headed hypocrite who wears a three-piece suit and just boasts about himself. And he's rich, okay? He's, he's not homeless. He's not poorly clothed, okay? He's rich enough to open up enough church buildings and off the strength of that and just dumping some people in water, he claims to be an apostle. Not only that, he goes out of his way to say that he's been preaching longer than Jesus that he's baptized more men than Jesus. This he's literally openly exalting himself as a man who's better than God. Okay. The nerve of this guy. In Luke chapter 9, verse 3, Christ told the disciples not to even have two tunics apiece. Okay. Today that's that that would be the equivalent to a three-piece suit. Okay, because Christ understood the carnality of men looking at the way that his apostles would be dressed, that men will find anything. Men, men are so carnal that they, they create things. They are inventors of things. They create sports and uh, all of this entertainment just to pay men handsomely to exalt them. Okay, and the cars and the luxury now, all these things, the appearance of men who are not spiritual will look at the way that man is dressed with two tunics and begin to worship him. OK, that's why Christ told them not to wear uh, two tunics apiece. He said, give one to, to him who has none and you only wear one tunic. OK, Christ was concerned about the Pharisees and the Nicolaitans. The way that they were dressing in nice robes. He was concerned about the way the rich man dressed in fine linen. So if it's important to my God, then I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> Just read your word and see how the Most High looks forward to destroying the rich. And he even said he will laugh at their calamity. Okay, so how much more damnation upon Geno Jennings, who is satanically employed and he's accumulated God's glory to himself. Remember, Christ said the Pharisees, remember, he said out outwardly, you're like whitewashed tombs, but inwardly you're full of dead man's bones. Okay, again, he's talking about apparel, how that man dressed. So look, in closing, read your Bible. Okay, understand that no flesh 
shall glory in his presence, and that your flesh will send you to hell and it won't show up. Don't let your flesh write checks that your soul cannot cash in the afterlife. The devil is very skilled at what he does, and he does not get screwed on the deals he makes with men.